Hi, I'm Jeff, and welcome to another one of my videos where I take a look at all the new comic books coming out on either June 13th or 14th, 2023, and I ask myself the question, what one new comic book would I buy this week if I could buy just one book? Let's go ahead and start off this video like we start off these videos most of the time by taking a look back at my pick from two weeks ago, which was World Tree. Kind of a combination of issue number two, uh, issue number one second print, and issue number one second print, one per store, thank you variant. Question remains, were they worthy and worthwhile just one book picks? The answer is, yeah, totally, totally. Um, I will just put it out there. I know you all know that I'm a big James Tynion IV fan, but I really do look at each one of his projects with a fresh set of eyes. I don't like it just because I like James Tynion IV. And uh, World Tree is great. World Tree is fantastic. It's dark. It's twisted. It's disturbing. Uh, issue number two built on all of that, gave us new characters. I enjoyed it a lot. I don't know what that says about me. Um, maybe some weird twisted things, but um, I'm really, really, really liking it. It's going to be around for years to come. James Henry IV has made a big commitment to this title. So, if you think you can stomach some twisted, dark, depraved, demented stuff, I highly recommend you pick up World Tree, uh, issues number one, and issue number two, and 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 beyond. Uh, you can get issue number one probably for still for cover price if you find the um, reprinted version of it. Uh, that's a, a first print. Uh, you can also get the second print, uh, which is perfectly fine. You can get the third print, which they just announced is going to be happening, which I, I'm a bit surprised about. I figured that uh, with the misprints and the reprints, there were probably already plenty of copies of issue number one out in the world. But no, we're going to get more with a third print of issue number one. So plenty of opportunities to pick up issue number one. And issue number two is on the shelves right now. I highly recommend doing it, but you don't have to. Uh, and uh, the, the real pick for two weeks ago was the issue number one second print, one per store thank you variant. Uh, this Momoko cover that was originally the one in 75 ratio for the first print of issue number one that they did in a virgin, no trade dress version as a thank you variant. Um, if you were able to get yours for, I would say, less than $90, I think you did good. If you paid more than $90, I really hope you love the book because I do think you might have overpaid and that the value of it is dropping. Um, I got mine for $60. I feel like that was a good to fair price for it. Um, I would personally target $70 to $80 at the most, uh, although I do know that there are people that got it for $40, $25, cover price, less than cover price. Um, so there's lots of variation out there, but if you're really, really hunting for it, I would put you in the $70 to $80 range maybe, or less if you can hold out for it. But I'm really glad that I got my copy of it, and I may even try to get a couple more copies of it because I do like it very much, and I'm a fan. All right, we can move on now and talk about the books that are coming out this upcoming week. There's a lot of them. I'm going to move through them as quickly as possible and say as little as possible because more than anything, I just want to make sure that you're aware of their existence. The first book I want to tell you about is... The Sandman Universe Nightmare Country, The Glass House, issue number three from DC Black Label. Here's the description. Demon Club, the King of Pain, offers the Corinthian a chance to indulge his most murderous tendencies. And the walking nightmare finds himself ravenous after years of guarded restraint. And though the first taste is free, what starts as a snack quickly escalates to a feast. And there will no doubt be hell to pay. Are the club's offerings enough to keep the Corinthians satisfied? Or will blood spill across the streets of San Francisco just as the immortal witch Thessaly enters the fray, seeking to satiate a hunger of her own? I mention this because I am reading it. It's on my polls. That's why I mention it to you this week. Um, not a Sandman Universe fan. I'm a James Tynion IV fan. I started reading it because of that. Uh, and I keep reading it because it's quite good. I was actually hoping to drop it when it got into this, uh, the glass house uh, version of the story, but um, no, it was too good and I kept reading it. So I mentioned it to you this week. The next book I wanna to mention to you is a new book. It is called Omega Gang, issue number one of an eight issue limited series from Scout Comics. Here's the description. Gab, Luna, 
Adam and Ama are a group of friends who call themselves the Omega Gang as a way of expressing the hopelessness of their lives and their generation. It's the beginning of summer and quite unexpectedly, they discover a set of mysterious eggs that chick them from their usual Gen Z depression. This is a big deal and they'll have to figure out what to do with them soon. But are they gonna be ready for what is about to emerge from those shells? This description, I don't know if this is like a, meant to be a love letter to Gen Z or like a condemnation of Gen Z. It's, it's hard for me to tell. Uh, but I don't know that the story sounds so interesting to me. I don't think the description did a really good job uh, just like getting its hooks into me, but it's new this week. It's halfway decently interesting. I wanted to make sure that you at least knew that it existed. The next book I want to mention to you is a new book. It is called Zeno. I believe that's how you pronounce it. Issue number one from Oni Press. Here's the description. Because the future is getting weirder every day, we give you Zeno, number 001, the first of three oversized 40-page intraocular lozenges of subversive surrealist science fiction to cure your awful awareness of it all. Try not to worry. The insertion process will be guided by the megawatt brilliance of Oni's brightest talents, past, present, and future as they slowly tune your hopes, dreams, desires, paranoia, alienation, anxiety, and adrenaline to produce the desired results. In our first exploratory outing, rising stars Melissa Flores and Daniel Irizarry surgically activate the hidden dimensions of the human senses. Cult phenoms Christopher Condon and Rick Cagnetti, Nick Cagnetti uh, debut the world's first intravenous video game system, Underground radicals Jordan Thomas and Shaky Kane surveil the suburbs for signs of covert infiltration, and master cartoonist and foundational Oni creator Phil Hester returns to the fold to leave his deepest mark yet. All right, so this is the first of three oversized hardcore science fiction anthologies that appear to have uh, four or five different stories in each one. If you're a really big science fiction fan, you might consider picking this up this week. If you're not a really big science fiction fan, I think it's going to be a little bit too much for you. <laughs> Here is the next book that I want to tell you about this week. It is a new book called Dead by Daylight, issue number one of a four-issue limited series from Titan Comics. Here's the description. Prequel comic based on the best-selling horror game Dead by Daylight. Readers can unlock an exclusive in-game charm using the unique code found inside the comic. When the rebellious Frank crashes into the lives of Julie, Joey, and Susie, together they'll unleash bloody chaos onto the sleepy, dead-end town of Ormond. Witness the terrifying origins of the Legion. As far as I know, and I am no expert on this topic, this is the first comic book appearance of anything from Dead by Daylight. Correct me down in the comments if I'm completely wrong about that. So if you are optimistic about the potential of Dead by Daylight, the video game being optioned as a movie or a television show and using some of the characters that they mentioned here, you might want to pick up the comic book on spec. Uh, if you're a fan of the video games and you just want more video game, uh, want more from the world of the video game, uh, you might pick it up for that reason. Uh, if you are a fan of the video game and you want to unlock the exclusive in-game charm, that might be another reason to pick this up. Or if you just kind of want to read something scary and creepy and new, um, that's yet another reason to pick up this book. Seems a little bit specialized, but if you fall into one of those specializations, now you know about it. The next book I want to mention to you is a new book. It is Spider-Man India, issue number one of a four-issue limited series from Marvel Comics. Here's the description. Spider-Man India returns. Just in time for his big role on the silver screen, Spider-Man India returns for his first miniseries in almost 20 years. Pavitar Prabhakar, sorry, I butchered that, is back, fresh from the end of the Spider-Verse in his own universe's Mumbai. But things aren't exactly simple. 
There's a science professor promising results, activating people's lizard brain, along with a ruthless businessman who may be more than he seems. Don't miss the breakout spider character of 2023. Okay, so the movie has only been out for a little bit over a week. Yeah, I guess just about. Um, so maybe this description should have had a spoiler alert. Maybe I should have mm, put my own spoiler alert on it. But uh, what's done is done. Spider-Man India is a character in Across the Spider-Verse. Spider uh, for those of you who have already seen it, you already knew that. Um, and I saw it earlier this week. It's quite good. It's really quite good. And the audience reaction, even like, I, I think it was a solid, good movie. The audience reaction, though, is way beyond that. So um, if you saw the movie and you liked the character, now here is your opportunity to, a story, to read a story that features that character specifically. This is not that character's first appearance. I don't think there's any spec potential there. I, I would... I would think it would have told us about new heroes or villains in the description if there was spec potential there. Uh, but this is basically for anybody who really, really liked the movie, wants more Spider-Man India, here you go. The next book I want to mention to you is Son of Origins. It's a Marvel Tales book, issue number one from Marvel Comics. Uh, you know what? I'm not going to read the description because it's quite long. This is all you need to know. This book collects the first appearances in comic books of the Hulk, Thor, Iron Man, Doctor Strange, and Daredevil. Uh, it is a $7.99 price tag book, so it's pretty thick. Uh, but this is a pretty cool opportunity. Um, most of us were not around when these books were published in 1962, 1952, 1959, 1951, and 1964. And these books are so valuable that we probably will never hold them in our hands to read. So if you ever wanted to read the introduction of these characters into comic books, once again, Hulk, Thor, Iron Man, Doctor Strange, and Daredevil, well, now here is your chance. I think it's pretty cool. The next book I want to mention to you is Captain Marvel, issue number 50 from Marvel Comics. Here's the description. Final issue of Kelly Thompson's historic run. It has been an impossible journey, one that's taken Carol Danvers across time and space and pitted her against enemies new and old. Superstar writer Kelly Thompson has run Marvel's premier heroine through the gauntlet, and now the boss of space burns brighter than ever. No one believed she would get this far. But that's the power of Captain Marvel and her Carol Corps. They'll never give up. Higher, further, faster, to the very end. Do not miss this capstone to a record-breaking run as Thompson puts her final fingerprints on Earth's mightiest hero. This Captain Marvel run has been an interesting one. I was reading it for a while and enjoyed it, and then I just kind of dropped off, and I picked it up again, and then I dropped off. Um, never really held on to me. Uh, a lot of that was driven by spec potential in this book. There was spec potential that got me interested in it, and then that went away, and then back and blah, 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 blah. None of it seems to have paid off yet, but a lot of really good spec takes time, so maybe something from this run will pop down the line. Regardless, I wanted you to know that it's ending. Uh, I do not believe, I do not, I'm not aware of at least, and once again, I'm no expert, um, that they are planning a reboot and a new Captain Marvel series issue number one as of right now. I'm sure one will come, especially with the movie coming later this year. But if you're a Captain Marvel fan, uh, here, enjoy it while you can, uh, because this is the last issue of this current run. Conversely, we have the next book that I want to tell you about, which is Black Panther, issue number one from Marvel Comics. Here's the description. A king without a crown. Banished from the throne and a fugitive in his own homelands, T'Challa still can't leave Wakanda without its sworn protector. A king without a crown, he finds new purpose lurking the streets and shadows of the Wakandian city that bears his father's name. Bernin T'Chaka. New direction, new villains, new creative team. Get in on the ground floor of Marvel's next smash hit. So yes, 
the the current run of Black Panther is ending and starting over again with a new issue number one. The 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 run that's ending was enjoyed by a lot of people. It's my understanding. I was not reading it myself, although I went all in on Black Panther issue number three, which was the first appearance of Tosin Oduye. I got a lot of that book. Uh, so let's hope that Tosin becomes a big hit sometime in the future. But now that, that run is over, we're now starting a new run. If you uh, are a Black Panther fan, you're gonna be all over this. If you're Black Panther curious, this is probably a fantastic jumping on point for you. And uh, it promises um, new villains, so there may be spec potential there as well. All of that are reasons why I wanted to make sure that you had it on your radar. The next book I'm gonna tell you about is a new book? Question mark? It is Something is Killing the Children, issue number one. Oh, excuse me, Something is Killing the Children, pen and ink, issue number one, from Boom Studios. Here's the description. Boom Studios is proud to present Pen and Ink, a deluxe art-focused format featuring stunning black and white interior inks with artist commentary. Begin your collection with this premium reformat of Something is Killing the Children, number one, celebrating the start of Erica Slaughter's epic journey with exclusive notes and annotations from artist and co-creator Werther Deladera. This issue will be available with a premium cardstock cover alongside a gorgeous spot UV variant cover and a blank sketch cover. This is something that Boom is doing uh, to make money. Let's be perfectly honest. They are taking stuff that is already out there, like Something is Killing the Children, issue number one, and they're gonna be doing it with other ones of their titles as well. I'm not sure which one's off the top of my head, so I won't even hazard a guess. But starting with Something is Killing the Children is a great place to start because it's their second most popular comic book of all time behind Berserker, I suppose. Maybe we'll see one for Berserker. Anyways, this is a, um, this is for the fans. If you have never read an issue of Something is Killing the Children, I do not recommend this. Pick up some eighth print of issue number one. Pick it up in trade or something. Don't pick this up. This is for the fans. And I'm a fan. So I'm definitely interested in seeing, um, reading this, um, and reading all of the bonus material, uh, specifically from artist Werther Deladera, giving us a little bit of a glimpse behind the scenes at some of the choices he made, uh, and things like that around a comic book that I love, 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 love. Something is killing the children is my favorite. So this is tailor-made for me. However, if you're not already a Something is Killing the Children fan, you probably don't care. The next book I want to mention to you is a new book. It is called Click, Click, Boom, issue number one of a five-issue limited series from Image Comics. Here's the description. Meet Sprout, a mute assassin who communicates exclusively through Polaroid pictures. Being raised by her doomsday prepping grandfather in the rolling hills of Idaho, Sprout has never been around other people, watched TV, or seen clothes outside of army fatigues. Now she's headed to the big lights of New York City to avenge her grandfather's murder. But will the city's mesmerizing glitz and glam help her succeed or be the death of her? This is actually pretty interesting to me. If my just one book pick wasn't what it is, and we'll get to it later, um, it might, probably was going to be this one as, as a backup one. This sounds like an, an interesting, cool idea that is going to challenge the storytellers, both the writer and the artist, because this character uh, doesn't speak. This character communicates in Polaroids, and they're our main character. So uh, that could be an interesting storytelling restriction that becomes an opportunity. Um, in addition, um, it's kind of an original idea of, of, of this mute character uh, avenging their grandfather and mentor. Uh, and this character is going to be very uncomfortable, not only because they have trouble communicating, but also because they've lived a very sheltered life and now they're going to what is probably the most uh, crazy environment on the planet. That's not true, but it's up there, uh, New York City. So 
there's a lot of interesting things that I think could come out of this story. I'm curious about it. If you don't like my Just One Book pick, maybe you consider steering yourself toward Click Click Boom uh, coming out this week. My last honorable mention is a new book. It is called Haunt You to the End, issue number one from Image Comics. Here's the description. A ghost story for the end of the world. In a not-so-far future, rife with climate disasters and worldwide instability, an eccentric billionaire and his crew, a disgraced journalist, a radical doctor, a TV demonologist, and a squad of hard-bitten military contractors, set out to prove the existence of life after death. But even if their mission is a success, the truth behind the most haunted place on Earth may not be the comforting revelation the world is hoping for. So this is interesting. It's basically kind of a, a action ghost story is the vibe I'm getting from it. That could be cool. That could be interesting. Uh, I don't think I have anything else to say. I think this description did a really pretty good job giving you all the information that you're interested in, uh, that, that's relevant. Uh, so if it you know, for some reason did something for you, well, now you know it exists. And the last book that I'm going to tell you about this week is, of course, my just one book pick of the week, and that book is Void Rivals, issue number one from Image Comics. Here's the description. The blockbuster Oblivion Song team of Robert Kirkman and Lorenzo De Felici debut the biggest new comic book series of 2023 with the launch of of an all-new shared universe and a surprise you won't see coming. War rages around the sacred ring where the last remnants of two worlds have collapsed around a black hole in a never-ending war. However, when pilot Darak and his rival Solila both crash on a desolate planet, these two enemies must find a way to escape together. But are they alone on this strange planet? And what dark forces await that threaten the entire universe? So on the surface, this seems about uh, to be about a story about two enemies marooned together who have to find enough common ground to escape their shared circumstance. This is not a new concept. I feel like I've seen this type of story many times before. I actually can't point my finger on any one. Um, let me know if you know of one down in the comments. But it's kind of not exactly original, but it doesn't mean that it won't be good. This is, after all, from creators Robert Kirkman and Lorenzo De Felici. And while I haven't really read much that Robert Kirkman has done, and I definitely didn't read Oblivion's song. Robert Kirkman, I think, is unarguably the most successful, at the very least financially, indie comic book creator of all time. Correct me if I'm wrong, let me know down in the comments, but I remind you that he created The Walking Dead, um, and that has been quite successful. Uh, and, and it was not successful in a vacuum, it was successful in large part because of Robert Kirkman. So it's possible that um, this could be successful as well. No guarantee, but it's possible. Um, it also seems like the story is a very small story because it seems to be about two characters marooned on a planet and what they discover there. But one of the things that's most interesting to me about this title is that, as the description mentions, that it is the launch of an all new shared universe. So it's not just a story about two people and the, uh, the, the conflicts that arise from them being stuck on this planet. There's a shared universe that this is opening up um, the, the world, us, to their world. Um, so that speaks to me that there is a level of commitment uh, to this. And... That level of commitment makes me very interested from a speculator standpoint. Um, they're not going to half-ass something that it seems like they're going to be spending a lot of time working on for a while to come. So that definitely piques my interest. So there's a lot of things. The Robert Kirkman of it, 
The story, while not original, sounds interesting, but most important, the, the creation of the shared universe that starts right here. These are the things that made this stand out for me. And while it's a bit of a flyer, I'm, uh, there's nothing that I'm like, oh yeah, this is definitely gonna be the best book of the week. It's just going with my gut, as I always do, and my gut is telling me that this is the standout book of the week, and that is why I have made Void Rivals my just one book pick for this week. That's it. Boy, I hope this video wasn't too long, and I really hope that there was some information in it that was useful to you. If there was, please hit the like button. And I encourage you as well to hit, uh, to go down into the comments and let me know any thoughts that you might have there, good or bad. I will read them all. Uh, and if you haven't already subscribed, I invite you to do that as well. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one.